Greetings in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. I'm greatly delighted to bring God's wonderful message once again today. Today is um, the 20th of May, 2023. We have been really blessed in a number of ways when we had the privilege of communicating the truth. I'm delighted on all those wonderful messages that you have heard. Not only me, in this moment in time, that God has raised numerous His servants across the whole world, placed in key locations, in key points in the world. And they are communicating nothing but the truth, nothing but the truth fearlessly as bold as ever. And I must tell you, brothers and sisters, what is happening in the world is so much of religion. Religions are the world's most successful money-making machines. All the religions. Not one particular religion, but all the religions of this world. The origination of the religions is not yesterday, 6,000 years ago. It is the Nimrod who started the, the first global religion connected to the sun and the moon worship. Nimrod, his wife Semiramis and his son Tumus created that religion of sun and moon worship. And that religion was adopted by the Assyrians almost 5,000 years ago. Then adopted by the, the Babylonians in the Babylonian Empire. And then Medo-Persians during the Medo-Persian Empire. The Grecians the Gre Gre during the Grecian Global Empire, the Romans, the Roman Empire. And left a Holy Roman Empire which is based on the Babylonian sun and moon worship. Undoubtedly, all the religions of this world are connected to sun and moon worship, including Christianity, including Christianity. And that is why, brothers and sisters, I'm not part of any religion to be logged. I have no followers of my own. I have no organizations of my own. I have no cathedral, hall or dome or organization that I can be proud of. I have only the place where I live with my family. Other than that, there is no cathedral, dome or mosque or temple that belongs to me. Nor do I have any followers. Nor do I get any payments for what I'm doing. Coming from a Buddhist background in the country of Sri Lanka, God, the living God, reached unto me. In this corner of this small country, Sri Lanka in the southern tip of India, Predominantly, 70% of the Buddhist people, my family too, was coming from Buddhist background. My name, Chandula, was given by when I was born to my father in 1956 by a Buddhist priest who was a friend of my father. Brothers and sisters, I don't make this for a living. I'm professionally here. Commercial, Retail and Development Bank. I'm a global expert on financial inclusion. I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm an impact investor. I'm globally involved in a number of financial institutions in the boards and some of them I share. Even in Sri Lanka, I'm involved very much in the financial sector. And I'm involved in a number of boards and some of them I share. My own organization 
which I founded, Lanka Impact Investing Network, which pioneered the first ever TV reality show for impact investors and social entrepreneurs. Launch the Earth Power TV reality show. And now globally connected organization. So therefore every, every penny or cent or rupee or whatever I earn, it has come from my professional engagements. For doing this, I don't gain anything. That's why brothers and sisters, today the religions are the most powerful and rich organization because it is connected to materialism, economy, socially, politically, less spiritually. And that's why more people, more conflict are as a result of religion, globally. All the wars, First World War, Second World War, all as a result of religion. I'm telling you. The, all these ethnic conflicts are due to ethnicity connected to a religious background. Contending for the faith is nothing to do with uh, expressing various doctrines and teachings. Contending for the truth means, contending for the faith means, as the Apostle Jude mentioned, it is connected to revealing the truth. That's what Jesus said. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Because brothers and sisters, to know the truth, the difficult thing, unless it is revealed to you. But once you know the truth, once you begin to live the truth, and the truth to live in you, and for the stand for the truth, and then proclaim the truth, you have to pay a heavy price. Not a small price heavy price. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ paid. The heavy price. He was rejected. He was despised. He was persecuted. Finally put to death. So was the apostles. All the apostles faced martyrdom. For what? Standing for the truth. It is not a glamorous thing. Just to stand on a stage with the most advanced equipment around you and the branded kits you wear, throwing the Bible up and down and telling bits and pieces here and there, the glamorous thing. But pronouncing the truth have the consequences. And you need to be bold. That's what Jesus said. Bold to the extent that they will sometimes persecute you, harass you, put you inside prison, even murder you, even martyr you. That's, you need to be ready for that. If you're not ready for that, you will run away from here and there. Brothers and sisters, in the first church age, hundreds and thousands paid their price with their lives. Boldly and happily ever, they faced it. Because they knew very clearly there's something beyond it. Death is not the terminating factor. They knew very well. And that's exactly, brothers and sisters, that I have been presenting to you. Our physical journey begins the day we are born. Like I was born in 1956, April 11th, 57 years ago. Uh, my, my physical journey may end or may, by God's grace, if His coming is taking place, be part of the transfiguration. But if it ends tomorrow, a week later, a year later, 
five years or ten years, or 15, 20, 30 years later, I'm not the one who determines that. My father, living God. But I must be bold enough, like Paul says, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Because I know that my inside man, the inner man, the soul, my real identity, where I have a lasting name, what Jesus mentioned, he told the, the disciples whom he gave power to do all the miracles that Jesus was doing for a short period of time. And when they came back and said, Master, fantastic things have happened to our lives. Dead raised, blind opened their eyes, deaf opened their ears, the cripples walk. Demons are cast out. But Jesus said, don't get carried away with that. But remember, be joyful, your names are written in heaven. The heaven means, doesn't mean somewhere in the sky. You know, brothers and sisters, as I told you regularly, my living God, my living God is not a deity, he is not an idol, he is not a human being. My living God is the eternal spirit, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh. He created this whole universe. And this universe is awesome and glorious. It's consisting of 10 trillion galaxies. You can just imagine the galaxy that we are in called Milky Way. In that galaxy, there's a tiny little arm, tiny little arm called Oran. And in that arm only, our 10 planet solar system along with the sun is there. And you know our solar system, how big it is. The Saturn and the Jupiter, the two planets, biggest planets, huge. In size, in compared to the Earth. Earth is only in the sixth in size. And even when you go to the space station, you only see 1% of the, the universe. And that is the very reason, brothers and sisters, the progressive modern day scientists are today Recognizing, recognizing very clearly, there has to be a most intelligent entity, they don't call whoever it is, has to create this. That is why finally now the Big Bang, the Big Bang theory is there was a Big Bang to begin the, the universe. I have no problem, possibly. 14 billion years ago. And the cause of the Big Bang, they say what? How did the Big Bang happen? What is the cause of the Big Bang? The cause of the Big Bang, they say God particle. They don't say God. They say God particle. But progressive scientists today identify that. Because they say universe is such an organized. And that's why I said many times, even the galaxy to galaxy, there's a distance. There's a demarcation. And they, they won't infringe into other galaxies' territories. That is why the black holes are there in the universe. What does the black holes do? The straying light, even if the light going astray, capture it and disappear. There are checks and balances in the universe. And that is why universe is so synchronized, so harmonized, so well organized. And the scientists recognize there are diversity of trillions of diversity of laws that are governing the whole universe. Not only the laws, 
like the law of gravity, law of aerodynamic, mission, law of uh, relativity. That's few only I know, only five scientists, but there's an awesome number of them. There are mathematical formulas in operation. And that is why the orbit of the Venus, the orbit of the Mercury, the orbit of the Pluto, the orbit of the Saturn and the Jupiter take according to a mathematical formula. And so is the orbit of the Moon and the Earth around the Sun. So brothers and sisters, our God is not part of the universe. He created it. Anybody who has who's been a creator, now if somebody uh, like Stephen Jobs who has created this iPad and iPhone, he's not inside that, no, he's outside. Any carpenter who uh, manufactured or built a chair, he's not inside that chair or table, he's outside. He's bigger than the chair. So our living God cannot be visualized by looking at the sun, moon and the stars, the trees, mountains, the rivers, the animals, the human beings. And that is why I say, brothers and sisters, even by looking at the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot see God. No way. How many pictures of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, 10,000 artists have drawn? One is different to the other. How many statues? One is different to the other. That's why Paul said very clearly, from henceforth we don't know him in the flesh. When Jesus said, if you have seen me, seen the Father, he is not referring to his eyes, ears, long hair and beard, no, or the physique. He was the Word made flesh. The mind of God revealed. The plan of God revealed. The purpose of God revealed. The thought of God revealed. The Word of God revealed. Voice of God revealed. The sound of God revealed. That's why Jesus said very clearly, for the woman of Samaria, when that woman asked, we don't have anything to do with, the Samaritans have no, nothing to do with Jews. But you know, you Jews are telling you must worship in Jerusalem. But we Samaritans say that we must worship in this mountain. But Jesus said, you are worshipping, you don't know what you are worshipping. But the hour cometh, the true worshippers, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And God is a spirit. Yes, indeed. God is a spirit. Eternal, everlasting spirit. He cannot be put inside a box, mosque, cathedral, a temple, a covid. No way. It is only the deities. It is only idols. It is only the pictures that have been put inside. And God is not in those. It's a man-made. A picture is a man design. Statue is a man design. Not designed by gods. Or the God that has eternal level lasting here. Not. And that is why Jesus said, I am in the Father, Father in me. Come from the Father, go back to the Father. Referring to the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, many people do not understand the journey of the soul, of our inner man. And as I tell you very clearly, brothers and sisters, your soul and my soul has much longer journey. When this universe is, we are talking about 14 billion years old. And the water that I drink, this water that I drink, 4 billion years old, 4 billion. Four billion years old. And remember this very clearly. Our planet Earth was originally a Pangaea called, supercontinent called Pangaea. Super ocean called Pantalsa. 
250 million years ago scientists are still trying to understand the, the timing they don't have bits and pieces only they have that's why it is called prehistory history what we have is 6000 years and that's the period the dinosaurs lived that's the period dinosaurs lived they also lived for 250 million years you ask me what is the evidence definitely there are evidence of the earth was a pangea ocean was pantasa and all the vehicles that run on the road whether it's trains buses cars motorcycles aeroplanes so all that run on what fossil oil dinos of flesh can you imagine the amount of peak dinos they did not live in our time 250 million years ago that's why most of the religion every religion is disconnected to that they don't understand that. the reincarnations rebirth all this cannot be reconciled to that time absolutely 250 million years it's a fact scientific what religion that connected to that what religion try to understand that realm that is why brothers and sisters my living god is not part of the universe is above and the universe consisting of 10 dimensions and we live in a three dimension world planet earth and the center is the fourth dimension the sheol the fifth dimension is the atmosphere and the space atmosphere is why it's called atmosphere full of atoms but you can't see and then the space you can't invisible things that is where the whole of the angels of the living god trillions of them control the affairs of the atmosphere and the space and connect to the universe and the demonic spirits the spirits of darkness also operate in the realm of the atmosphere under the subjection and the authority of the order of the angels brothers and sisters that's why i say that your life doesn't begin on the day you are born particularly to the people whom god has chosen before the foundation if you were in his mind you know how i asked recently when i was doing a session to a group of um, uh, corporate management officers of an organization which i'm involved in i asked them how big is your mind it is is it restricted to your brain your brain is very small in inside this uh, little head of us but brothers and sisters today we have uh, this most innovative creative equipment and cars and which is designed by people because their mind has travel length and the breadth horizontally vertically and understood things and created innovated so there is these people's mind is bigger than their body that is why brothers and sisters i was talking about this near death experience every year there are nearly 5 million people in the world now we have 7 billion 5 million oh 5 million people in the world experiencing near death experience that's what i told that one of my staff member he's a buddhist he's still living worked under me and he retired recently he is a media personality still living still doing various things when he was 29 or 30 i can't remember he got a heart attack his parents were dead and his friend called me and i went to the hospital 
laid my hand, that's the only thing I could do. And soon after I left, he said, suddenly he felt like a feather. And then he was in the ceiling of that room. And then you could see his body lying on the bed. But eyes were in the body in the bed, but the, what he could see was from the ceiling. Not only he saw, but he suddenly heard the nurses, the doctors and the assistants running with oxygen machines and various other equipment and uh, talking, discussing and all that he heard from the ceiling, not from the body. That's why, brothers and sisters, my consciousness not inside my body, outside. Oh, my consciousness is not part of my body, physically. My consciousness is inside, but it is in the inner man, the soul. The soul. So, brothers and sisters, we are talking about the journey of the soul. What we have today is our physical body. However rich you are, however powerful you are, there is a limitation to the physical side of your joint. That's why the Alexander the Great conquered the whole world at the age of 33. Same age as the Lord Jesus Christ. Conquered the whole world. And then he got malaria and he was dying. And then he recognized, though I conquer the world, I have nothing. That's what he told the uh, general, my coffin should be carried out, my hands outside signify I'm carrying nothing. All the treasure, gold and the silver should be put on the path where you are my, carrying my coffin. Though I got the treasure, worthless. Brothers and sisters, you may be the most powerful person. You may be the most richest person. You would want to plan to live like Michael Jackson. He wanted to live for about 150 years. He did every possible thing. He spent money on doctors, physicians, this, this, that, this, that, and the other thing he did. But he died at the age of 50. So brothers and sisters, when you don't understand your inner man has a longer journey and the longer beginning than the birth of your, we celebrate birthdays, no? Have you ever celebrated uh, the birth of your soul? Or the size and the shape of your soul? You don't. That's why brothers and sisters, the color of your inner man, your soul, you don't know. The height and the breadth, you don't know. So therefore, brothers and sisters, when God created us in the realm of the spirit, in his image, in his likeness, what we had was the attributes of righteousness, perfection, and the glory and majesty of the living God. Brothers and sisters, the unseen things are more beautiful than the seen things. One example is if you go to the bottom of the sea, if you all go to an aquarium, you see how beautiful is the, the fish, colors of the fish. But if you go to the space, then also you see the beauty. Most of the astronauts, if you ask them, they say how beautiful when you go to the space and see things. But brothers and sisters, it's more beautiful if you can see the dimensions that you either two can't see. You can't cross the dimensions now. You cannot. You cannot see the fifth dimension because it's unseen to you. You cannot go to the fourth dimension. It will be only when you are dead. That also when you are die a sinner. You will go there. 
rest of the five dimensions which is in the realm of god you cannot cross them but jesus said your names are written in heaven when when he referred to the heaven it is not referring to these clouds and the sky you know when you fly on a aeroplane or plane over 10 over 40 to 50 40000 feet you see the clouds and in the same way we are a globe one the plane is flying there above another plane is flying below because if you dig a resting and go to the bottom it's what you find the other side of the earth is america so brothers and sisters god fills the whole universe but he is above and that is the very reason the dimensions of gods are very important so the journey of the soul is much longer and the history of the soul also beyond the date of birth of your physical life the day you born to your mother's womb i explained to you last couple of sundays how god told him, um, uh, jeremiah even before you came into your mother's womb i knew you so brothers and sisters god has chosen you and me before the foundation of the world and that is why jesus said very clearly in uh, john chapter um, Let's read that. I shared that, but I didn't want to repeat it because this is very, very important. John chapter six. Um, yes, thirty-seven. And all that the Father has given to me shall come to me, and him that come unto me I will no wise cast out. Father has given. Then, turning again to John chapter seventeen. Verse six, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, past tense, thou gavest to me. Talks about a group of people whom the Father has given to the Lord Jesus Christ to redeem, to apply the efficacy of His blood. The efficacy of the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See efficacy of the Spirit of God. The efficacy of the Word of God to be applied, and to save them by His grace, redeem them by the efficacy of His blood. They were given by God. When Jesus was talking about this two thousand years ago, I am born out of two thousand years. but there are many people who are born 4000 years before the lord jesus christ starting from adam all the people that were lost in adam they need to be redeemed dying they were. and that is the reason no brothers and sisters when jesus died on the cross and he said it is finished done work is done but he went right to the bottom of the earth and to the center of the earth the sheol and released all the old testament saints from set onward abraham isaac jacob daniel jeremiah isaiah ezekiel daniel all the old testament saints who was stuck inside all were released by the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ which was upon the efficacy of the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ release them all and when the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead they all raised rose graves open and they rose from the dead and they went to the red mount now brothers and sisters all the people 
They were born 4,000 years before the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ redeemed them. And they are all now in the realm of God. Their body, soul and the spirit. And then there are people who are now dead in Christ, what we call the dead in Christ. And they all will become the redeemed of the Lord. The efficacy, that's what I said, all whom you have given, come to me. If God has not given your name, you're out for the count. Your names, Jesus said, your name is written in heaven. If your name is written in heaven, it will be written in the Lamb's book of life. It is, Lamb's book of life means that you come to the, the efficacy of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You come under the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. You come under the efficacy of the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You come under the efficacy of the Spirit of God. You come under the efficacy of the living God, Word. Which is sharper than two-edged sword. Sharper than two-edged sword. Brothers and sisters, and that is the reason that Jesus said very clearly, dying they were. And the people whom God has chosen, this world has 8 billion, nearly 8 billion people. Probably there will be another 4 to 5 billion people who are dead and gone. Say 13 to 14 billion people altogether, human beings. And among these human beings of 14 billion, I don't know who are the chosen of God, whose minds, whose names are written. It's not the name that your parents given to you, no. A name that is connected to the mind of God. That is the very reason, brothers and sisters, as I told you last Sunday, in book of Revelation, chapter verse 19, this is the most important and beautiful revelation about it. 19 verse 13 to 16. And he was clothed with the vesture of dipped in blood, that is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. And his name, and his name is called the Word. Logos. And the armies of armies which is in heaven, armies which is in heaven means that in the dimension of God. Those are the people whom redeemed by him. Clothed with fine linen, the righteousness of the saints, white and clean, the redeemed of the Lord. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. That he should smite the nations and rule them with the rod of iron. Righteousness. And he treadeth upon the winepress of the fierceness of the breath of the Almighty. There is no mercy now. Judgment. Now we have mercy. Now we have grace. But the time when the Lord Jesus Christ come to rule and reign. He is not Prince of Peace. He is not Yeshua, Redeemer, Saviour. He is coming as what? Verse 16 says, He, he hath in his vesture and his thigh another name written. King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. So, two sides. One side, the Word of God. The name is called the Word of God. The other side is called the King of Kings. The responsibility that comes with the accountability that God has given to you. Completion of the full redemption of the, the people whom God has chosen and the planet Earth. The planet Earth cannot go like this. 
this is contaminated polluted messed up in style totally totally tarnish the image of the planet which is absolutely good still good is remaining and contaminated corrupted diluted defiled that's it planet earth. so god has not created this confusion that is taking place in the planet earth. the wars that is taking place on the planet earth is god created no as i told you brothers and sisters god never created me like a sinhalese or sinhala buddhist or tamil hindu burg christian no god never created chinese germans indians moroccans argentines no god is not the creator as we spread to various locations as we migrate the food we eat the environment of the location characteristic the human nature the trees why the african elephant is different to the asian elephant elephant is elephant but african elephant has a different shape and size asian elephant has a different shape and size did god make that difference no god is not responsible for that you know brothers and sisters many people are trying to assume thing and conceptualize things according to their pure little mind but god cannot be measured like that god is not a deity which cannot can be controlled and put inside a box brothers and sisters that is the reason i have told you very clearly the name when jesus comes to rule and reign for thousand years yes it's going to happen i'm telling you brothers and sisters whatever the religion you belong to it doesn't matter whether you are a hindu whether you are a buddhist whether you are a judaism or shintoism whether you are a christian catholic anglican pentecostal charismatic whether you are islamist muslim whether you are a mormon whether you are a shiite or sunni does not matter i can tell you bold yes ever there is going to be thousand year rule on this planet the lord jesus christ would rule on this planet for thousand years now we are almost almost at the end of 6000 year period we are 2000 after the lord jesus christ before the lord jesus christ there are 4000 years and he will restore this planet earth to the original status as i told you brothers and sisters this universe is such an organized place very well synchronized place there is no confusion chaos in the universe because the universe is operating according to numerous laws the almighty god has placed in for operations and that is why in the psalm 119 verse 89 says forever forever o lord thy word is settled in heaven forever forever o lord thy word is settled in heaven so those universal laws cannot be tampered with can't change it you cannot do various various things in this planet earth in the worldly affairs in the atmosphere little bit in space can send some satellites into the space rockets into the space and things like that even rocket to the moon or to some other places but beyond that you can't do anything it cannot be comprehended by man so brothers and sisters when you understand the awesomeness of the living god when you understand how 
puny little you are. Yet, when God has a plan and a purpose, and then God wants to really bring, bring back this planet Earth to the original status, of course, as far as the timing is concerned, the 6,000 years is very insignificant period of time. 6,000 absolutely insignificant. We are now talking about in the 2023, my age is 67 years old. There may be some people 77, 87, 97, some people maybe 27, 17 years. But yet, maximum 120 years, not beyond that. Look at the time. When it was a Pangaea, supercontinent 250 million years ago and the dinosaurs lived for another 250 million years. Yes. Imagine that that period is compared to this thousands and hundred years. And then beyond the universe is 14 billion years. The galaxies, the light years, all that, brothers and sisters, much, huge, you cannot comprehend them. That is why, brothers and sisters, religions cannot conceive the living God, understand and comprehend. Because the religions have their own agenda. It is connected to political, social, economical, material prosperity of the respective leaders of the religions and the organization. Jesus never founded a religion. The Christian religion is not founded by the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, when he came, Born in Bethlehem, grew up as a carpenter's son. The Lord Jesus Christ was not God born. Please understand that. He was not God born. He was 100% human being. He was not born out an angel, though the Gabriel angel came and told Mary, I come from the very presence of God. So I can see. By the Spirit of God, he was born sinless human being. Like when God created Adam originally without any sin. Yes, first Adam was before the fall without sin. That's why Jesus called the second Adam. The first Adam was without sin when he created before the fall. Not only first Adam, even Eve before the fall, before she was uh, defiled, she was sinless. So brothers and sisters, that is the reason that we need to understand That the role the Lord Jesus Christ played. That's why God cannot die on the cross. God is eternal spirit. Nobody can kill him. Nobody can slap him. Nobody can ask him to carry a cross. Nobody can whip him 39 times. No. Jesus not for one third of he was not one third of God as some Christian religions pronounce. No. Not at all. Read the Bible properly. There is no eternal son. Everlasting father only. Jesus himself said. Behold the Lord God of Israel one. Beside me there is no other God. So the doctrine of Trinity, which is practiced by all the Christian religions, 
is not original, belong to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, Babylonian. Nimrod created the original Trinity. Connect to the Sun God. Sun, that's how the concept of plurality of gods came. But brothers and sisters, the Creator is one. And when Jesus died on the cross, he is not God died. God cannot die. One third of God did not die. You know, like my friend and my staff member who was having that near-death experience and suddenly duck, his life came back to the body, he was in the ceiling and during that time one third of his heart muscles died. Even now he is living with two thirds. So when Jesus died on the cross, one third of God did not die. He was the express image of God, but God is not an image of a human being. For the purpose of redemption, he was demonstrating the word made flesh. That is for the purpose of redemption. And he finished it on the cross. And that's why he said, I am with you in my anywhere, but I shall be in you by the Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. Christo in the spirit of Christ. It's not one third, the very spirit of the living God in you and me. So brothers and sisters, when you begin to understand what Jesus completed on the cross, and he began to complete the redemption journey for you and me, and he redeemed the Old Testament saints, completed it fully, they are the only group of people from the planet Earth now fully redeemed. Body, soul and the spirit, they are in the realm of God. The realm of God is beautiful. That's why the Bible says, I hath not seen, he hath not heard, nor has it got into the heart of man. But God has prepared them. You know, brothers and sisters, Today many people fear death, no? Why people fear death? They are anxious. They don't want to leave their loved ones. They don't want to leave all the goodies, the assets and things like that, wealth, that they have to leave. They have to leave their loved ones. Their loved ones will cry for a day or two and that's it. They forget. You are a memory. Sometimes you, they'll remember every year. But they carry on with their work thereafter. But brothers and sisters, that is why it is so important to look at the soul. That my staff member, he's a media person now, he's not a Christian, he's a Buddhist, even still. But he experienced but is connected to the soul. It's up to him to seek and find out what his soul is going to be. And he knows what I am engaged in. And if they have a desire, then he should ask. I'm not going to tell him, look, and force him and come and this is it. No. I will never ever force anybody. Like this, many many religious Christians trying to convert people. I am not here to convert people to a religion, for that matter Christianity and stuff. I am giving some goodies and blessings and miracles and, you know, uh, trying to convert people to Christianity, you know. I am here to present the truth, the way I heard it. Coming from a Buddhist background, I heard it. And when I heard it, when I knew it, this is it, there's nothing can stop me giving up. It was hard for me at that time, sometimes against the wishes of your parents, when you have to take steps. But eventually they understood. They became a part of me. But brothers and sisters, 
this is it. We don't offer religion. We don't offer conversion. We don't offer goodies, blessings. That is the reason, brothers and sisters, when Jesus was performing miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening the blind eyes, opening the deaf ears, getting the cripples to walk, feeding thousands. John, in his book, Gospel of John, chapter 20, says, if I were to write all the, the great work the Lord Jesus Christ did during this short period of three years, short period of three years, yes. He began his ministry at the age of 30 and he died at the age of 33. During that three-year period, John said the miracles he did, if I were to write books of this world, it's not sufficient. That's what he says. Please read that. But then Jesus stopped all the miracles. He stopped every miracle. And then he began to reveal to the people the purpose of his being. And what he's going to do. And the price he's going to pay for redeeming the people whom God has chosen. Even Peter said, don't do it. Far from it. Jesus told him, get behind me, he said. And when he began to reveal and said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. He said, my body is the meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. Referring to the God's redemption plan. And many people who following him, thousands, all left him. Thousands left him. Ten thousands left him. There was a close group of people, like Nicodemus who followed him, about 70 people. They all left. And he was only left with the 12 disciples. And then Jesus asked, will you also leave now? Then Peter said, where can we go? You have the words of life. That's exactly brothers and sisters. These so-called people who are performing miracles and 99% they are fake. 99% I must tell you. They are just entertainment. They are performers. They are entertainers with these miracles and all kinds of things. Jesus never entertained his miracles and shook his hands and said, you got healed, you were raised from the dead, please now tell all the thousands of people. Never, never did that. You know, brothers and sisters, as I told you, these miracles are nothing. The greatest ever miracle that ever took place in the history of the planet Earth is the miracle of resurrection. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Not only him, all the Old Testament saints from Seth onward, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all, all did rise 2000 years ago. Only two people, they experienced the miracle of not dying, that is Enoch. And Elijah. Also showcasing the fact the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ or the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the living element, will experience total transfiguration of the body. That's why, brothers and sisters, we are not far away from that time. The glorious miracle, not these petty healings like, you know, back pain, leg pain, this, that and the other thing, getting a job, 
getting money, getting miracles, this and that, becoming millionaire, what and all kinds of things like that. These are petty miracles I call. I have experienced miracles in my life, I must, my, my family. I have experienced divine healing in my body. But in the meantime, sometimes I have experienced pain. I have experienced losses. I have experienced shortcomings. I have experienced prosperity. That's what Paul says. I know how to be a bound, how to be a base. Look at the life of Paul. Shipwrecked, beaten, all kinds of problems. That's why he said, I know how to be a bound, how to be a base. And in fact, when he had a condition in his physical body, he cried to God three times, God, do something. He said, my grace is sufficient for you to go through this. So, no brothers and sisters, what we have in Christianity today, even the so-called charismatic Pentecostal pastors or so-called prophets and lion of Asia, cat of Persia and all kinds of people like that, are performing fake miracles, not only in this country, in the United States, these TV evangelists stage miracles all over the world. You go to Africa, you go to India, you go to many parts of the world, there are these kind of so-called preachers and so-called pastors and prophets. Stage fake miracles. But brothers and sisters, truth cannot be made fake. Jesus said, I am the truth. No man come to the Father but by me. If you are seeking God in miracles, once the miracles are not there, you will leave. That's why people go from church to church, organization to organization, to group to group. So brothers and sisters, you need to understand very, very clearly, brothers and sisters, that when the Lord Jesus Christ will begin to come back, and before he come back, the glorious miracle that can ever happen is going to happen. And you know that miracle? All the people in the last 2,000 years, in the last seven church ages, from the Ephesian church up to now our church age, the Laodicean church, all the dead in Christ will be raised from their age. That's what Jesus said. I will raise them on the last day. I'm the resurrection and life. The living element, if you and I counted to worthy to be living element, You know, brothers and sisters, if you have gone through, we were deformed. We were properly formed from the dust of the ground, but with the fall, we were deformed, contaminated. That is why, brothers and sisters, many people do not understand. God didn't, God did not, when, when you say God created the us in his image, Chinese will say, ah, God is like Chinese. God is like Japanese. No. God's image is not referring to our physical appearance. The size of my head, height of my physique. If God is five feet and seven inches, that's the image. If God is six foot and seven inches, or four, four foot and no inches, height, breadth, that's not the measurement. So brothers and sisters, it is so important for us to understand very clearly this glorious body that call called human body, but it's mortal. 
dying and decaying, deteriorating because of the sin. And that is why this properly formed body, Bible said God formed from the dust of the ground, man and he gave his breath and he became a living soul. And in the fall we were deformed. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ came to reform us. We are not totally uh, cast out, but we need to be reformed. By the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are reformed. By the efficacy of the mighty name, we receive the very Spirit of God. Then we are transformed. We become the temple of the living God. Then as for Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, by the fivefold ministry that is given to us to bring us to the unity of faith, to knowledge of the Son of God, unto the measure and the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ, referring not physical, we are translated into the kingdom of His Son. And those people will have an opportunity to transcend into transfiguration. Why is the dead in Christ rise? This mortal body will put on immortality. This corruption, the incorruption, that's the greatest miracle that is going to take place. And that miracle is going to take place, brothers and sisters. I can tell very boldly. Not only that miracle, as I told you very clearly, there is going to be rule of thousand years. The Lord Jesus Christ will rule for thousand years. Restore this planet earth back to the original. Now today I saw G7, originally it was G8, group of eight originally. Russia was dropped out, now it is called G7. Now they are gathering at Hiroshima. I have been to Hiroshima a couple of years ago as a new favor. Discuss about how to bring peace, harmony, restore various things. It will never happen. Neither G7 or G8 or G20 or G30 or G50, G170 is not going to work. Until the time the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings, the, the Lord of Lords. And have the word of God integrated into the fabric of his being. Sword, rod of iron. Restore this planet back to the original status. Redemption on the planet. Now, brothers and sisters, for that purpose, it is the redeemed of the Lord that shall return to the sand. To rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not the Emmanuel Macron or Joe Biden or Modi or Putin that is going to be ruling the planet Earth then. They are out for the count. Neither people in the royal, Saudi royal family or anybody in this country or any other country. King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. What is the purpose? The word of God. So brothers and sisters, when your eternal journey began, which is your beginning of the soul, you had an identity. And that identity have a name. And the name is connected to the mind of God. You have a name, I have a name. That is why that name is connected to the word. One side, 
The name is called the word of God. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the reason, brothers and sisters, until that name is revealed, when you are redeemed, the name that I have, Chandula Abhay Vikrami, is name given by my parents when I was born as a human being. The name of my human body. It's life. Eventually, it will be a memory when I die. If I die. Brothers and sisters, there is a name that I have which is written in the realm of God, which enable me to cross the dimensions and be up and down, back and forth in the realm of God. Like Paul said, to be absent from the, this body is to be present with the Lord. So brothers and sisters, it is indeed so wonderful to know and understand that you have much greater and glorious history than the year that was year that you were born in. Not only you have a, a glorious future head, future connected to not to a next 30 years or 40 years or 100 years, 1000 years, no. Eternity, eternity. And that is where, brothers and sisters, that the new heavens and the new earth will be there means, uh, the heaven doesn't mean, not the universe, the universe is perfect. New heavens means the atmosphere and the space has to be cleansed. Even the space has to be, there are a lot of junk in the space. All these satellites roaming is junk, they have created a kind of junkyard there, all these countries. Putting all kinds of satellites in a junkyard. So the atmosphere, the planet Earth, the atmosphere and the space has to be cleansed, purified, polluted, contaminated fully. And the Lord Jesus Christ will do that during the period of thousand years. People cannot do various things what they want. There would be a rule. You know, today people break the law, no? bribe the person and you break the law, bribe the person and get away. Go to prison and bribe and you have a cushy life there as well. There won't be like that. There cannot be influence and bribing taking place. So brothers and sisters, it is very, very clear that there would be a restoration of this planet Earth to the original status. And the Lord Jesus Christ have the full responsibility and accountability to do that. And he will indeed do that with the redeemed of the Lord. Like the Lord Jesus Christ had a name connected to the word of God, the mind of God. On the other side, the king of kings. And the Bible says very clearly, the redeemed of the Lord would be connected to that rule and reign. And they would be part of the priesthood and the, the kings. Names are written. Your name and my name is written. It is not the name that your parents have given. It is the name that connected to eternity. Everlasting life. Life of righteousness. Holiness. Life of righteousness, holiness. And that's where, brothers and sisters, I was in the mind of God. The before the foundation of the world, the Lamb was slain for me. That is why my name was given by the Father to the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved by His grace and redeemed by His blood. And, and that is the reason, brothers and sisters, when I am saved by His grace, redeemed by His blood, filled by His Spirit, what is the significance? 
Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me when he rose from the dead. Go therefore baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit. One name. Because Jesus said, I have come in my Father's name. Gabriel said to Mary, I am coming from the very presence of God. You shall call him his name Yeshua. The Almighty God, the Savior, Redeemer. And Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit in my name. There is one way and one name. And that is why Jesus said, I have kept them in my in your name. Kept them in your name. That's what it says here in John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Uh, says here, I am manifested thy name unto them. Thou gavest thine name, manifested and kept in his name. So brothers and sisters, until your name, which was written in the realm of God, when? When? Thousand years ago? Two thousand years ago? Five hundred years ago? Five million years ago? No. Before the foundation of the world. Billions of years. When we were in the mind of And the name that is written, God the Almighty has given it to the Lord Jesus Christ for his redemption purpose. Jesus did not die in vain. He died for the purpose of redeeming the people whom God has entrusted to him. He said, all that God has given to me come to me, none that come to me I will So, brothers and sisters, until my body, soul and the spirit is fully redeemed, fully redeemed. Now, I'm not fully redeemed. I'm still partially redeemed. I'm saved by His grace, redeemed by His blood, filled by His spirit. Now, I've been translated to the kingdom of His Son. But I'm still not transcended to the transfiguration. So therefore, I am not fully redeemed. Because I have heard the shout, I have heard the voice of the archangel, but Trump is yet to take place. Last Trump. So when I am fully redeemed, body, soul and the spirit, when this body becomes mortal, body becomes immortal, when this corrupt body becomes incorrupt, when the dead in Christ rise, original name that God has to me, given to me will be revealed. He will give me a white stone, name written, nobody knows, only you and the Father. Until then, until then, you are kept in what? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said, I kept them in thy name, the name of the Lord Jesus and that is why Bible says very clearly, whatever you do in deed or word, do it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do. Not in titles. Not in this way or that way. But in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why Bible says there is no other name given, in, given under heaven for the man's salvation. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall come. I'm not saying the Bible. So, brothers and sisters, until my body, soul, and the fully redeemed, until that day which is not far away, I am kept in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, as long as I am kept in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the efficacy of His blood. Lord Jesus Christ. As long as I am kept in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have the efficacy of His Spirit. As long as I am kept in the mighty name of the Lord, I have the efficacy of His Word. And then He will keep me as the apple of His eye. Hide me under the shadow of His wing. 
No weapon that rises against shall me prosper. Thousands shall fall at me for ten thousand beside. That's what God told him. Yes. Until your body, soul, and spirit is redeemed, we have to ensure the efficacy of His blood upon my body, soul, and spirit. The efficacy of the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ upon my body, soul, and spirit. The efficacy of the Spirit of God upon my body, soul, and spirit. The efficacy of the Word of God sharper than two edged sword. My body, soul, and spirit. Kept in His name. So until the original name that is given to me, that I synchronize with it, identify with it, God said, This is my son. Is my God. Let us pray. Wonderful Holy Father, we are indeed thankful to you. Your grace is upon us. I commit every brother and sister who is here in this message. I ask you to begin to minister to them. And let this message go forth in all its power. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you all, brothers and sisters.